This is a quick video over the Hall voltage. So Hall voltage. So what is a Hall voltage? Voltage. Well, let's pretend we have some material in a. Basically, we have a box of material. So this is not a good box, but it's a terrible box. Um, so let's say we have this box. Now what we do is we apply a current that makes it flow this way. So we have some current flowing through through here and we're going to say that current is equal to 20 amps. So that's our current. Now the next thing we want to look at is actually the width of this. So let's say our box has a width of 0 0.02 meters and that's just really just 20 millimeters. So that's our width of our box. So now that we have that, what we want to do is measure the voltage on this side of the box and this side of the box. So we'll measure the voltage and we'll get some delta V. And this is called the Hall voltage. Hall voltage. Voltage. Whoops and usually it's just written as VH. Now if I ask you what is the voltage of that right now? This is perfectly in the exact same spot. What's the voltage? Right now the voltage would be zero unless we applied a uh, basically a magnetic field perpendicular to the flow of electrons. So we have these electrons flowing through this material, through this material and we're going to apply some type of magnetic field and what we call that magnetic field or the symbol we give that magnetic field is BZ. BZ. So we're going to say BZ is equal to 1 Tesla. Tesla. Remember uh, the strength of a magnetic field is measured in Teslas and this magnetic field is going to be 1 Tesla. Now this is kind of interesting in that what we'll basically get is the electrons Will actually curve. So you have the electrons going through and once we apply that magnetic field they'll curve to the side. So what we end up having is basically this side has a lot of electrons. A lot of electrons. So we get these electrons and these electrons are like okay I'm being pushed to the side so then they'll just flow through this wire and create a change in voltage or a delta V. So basically what you see is you see the voltage do this. You see the electrons being pushed that way and once we attach it, some of the electrons will start to flow through this and create a voltage difference from this side, from this side, to this side. So that is the Hall's voltage. And now let's get around to actually calculating what is that Hall's voltage given that the um, electrical conductance of the material is, let's say the electrical conductance is 4 times 10 to the seventh meters ohms to the power of negative one. So that's the conductance of the material. And we're also going to say it has an electron mobility of electron mobility. And this is just how easy can the electrons flow through the material. We're going to say it has a electro, electrical well, electron mobility of 0 0.001 um, meters squared per voltage second. So we have the conduct the conductance, the mobility of the electrons, and also the dimensions and the amperage. So can we find the Hall's voltage? Well, let's just start looking at equations. So one equation we know is equal to basically the Hall's voltage is equal to RH RH and I mean you may see this as other symbols but usually it's just the um, Hall's coefficient so it's just some number given and we can actually calculate this number so we'll actually end up having to calculate this number and what we do is we multiply that by the current our current is I and then we multiply it by the um, the uh, strength of the magnetic field perpendicular to the flow of electrons and what we get is BZ now we're going to divide that all by the width. 
so 0 0.020 meters. That must be in meters, not in millimeters or anything like that. You have to solve it in meters. So what we need to do is solve for RH. So now let's solve for RH. So what is RH? RH is actually equal to 1 over the number of electrons per cubic meter times the electric charge of an electron. So what does that give us? Well, that we don't really know what N is. We know what E is. E is just the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the ninth or something. But we actually don't need to know that because we have another equation. We know the electron mobility is equal to the conductance of the material divided by N to the power of N times E. So what do we do? Well, we just solve this equation for this and then plug it in right there. So what we'll do is move that over here and this over there. So we get NE is equal to sigma over mu E. So now we can plug this right there. Mu E, whoops. E. So this becomes 1 over sigma mu E. Well, mu E just pops up there. So what we get is mu um, so let's just, we get mu e over sigma, right? So now, now that we have that, what can we do with it? Well, we can just plug this in to right there. So now we have, what do we have? Well, we have, let's do it in white. We have this, we have this, we have this, we, oh, we have the width of it and we have that and we have that. So we have everything we need. So let's plug it into a calculator and see what we get. All right, so let's do some double brackets. We get, what is mu e? Mu e is 0 0.001. And then we're gonna divide that by bracket four times 10 to the power of seven. Put that in a bracket. Very big number, but that's what we expect. Multiply that by 20, because that's the current. Multiply that by 1, because that is the magnitude of the uh, magnetic field. We're going to divide all that by 0 0.02 meters. And we get a pretty small number. So we get negative 3, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 8. So VH equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 8 voltages. Or volts, not voltages. <laughs> so, that's a Hall effect. The voltage overall is what you could expect. You would expect it to be a very small voltage. I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be super large, but that's the general idea of how to calculate the Hall's voltage. And what we actually did this, we did this only for um, materials that really allow electron flow, not really Hall flow. So, this was more of a for electrons e electron not whole